there's an, a very interesting point, a very, uh, a very important point to recognize in this sort of collectivist approach to um, community-based research. There's a phrase, right, and the phrase is called, generally speaking, white man's white man's burden, right? White man's burden is this idea that it is the obligation of it doesn't necessarily have to be the white man, but the the privileged the privileged um, the privileged group to to alleviate those who are suffering or the underclass of the social and moral ailments or the obligations that they have. It's my burden to to direct, um, and that is not the way that you want to approach participatory action research, right? Especially if you're doing uh, participatory action research as a black person, white person. Um, Asian, Hispanic, whatever you might be, as someone in the third world, traveling to the third, uh, in the first world, quote unquote, and I hate these sort of, um, these classifications, but we'll go with the standards, someone from the first world traveling to the third world and say, hey, you know, um, you indigenous third world folk, um, I know what's best for you because I was trained in the West and let me tell you what you need to do in order to govern your community properly, right? You, we heard that you've had problems in your community, and here we are from the first world, and we're going to inform you of what the right thing to do. That is not participatory act, action research. That's not actually good research, right? Um, what you want to do in participatory action research is first you have to recognize, and sort of under this, I didn't put this in, in the discussion, the first thing that you want to recognize in sort of this collectivist approach to sort of problem solving, um, the first thing that you want to recognize in that Problem solving is always going to be a shared, a shared responsibility, right? It's a responsibility that you assume as a researcher by doing participatory action research. You now have an obligation insofar as you've selected this particular group to alleviate them or help them with some problem solving, right? So you can imagine, let's just something off the top of my head. Imagine that I wanted to um, alleviate some of the, the gang violence in an urban area somewhere in the United States of America, right? And I come from the suburbs. So I want to go to the urban community, and I want to help this urban community of the gang violence that they have. So the bad thing, as we said, you don't want to accept this burden and say, oh, well, you know, here I am, and I've, I, I went to school, and I, I took some uh, uh, um, classes on social determination and I'm going to help you solve your gang violence problem and here's how we're going to do it. You don't want to do that, right? Especially in the hood. Um, so that's a bad approach. What you recognize is that problem solving becomes a responsibility because you are now telling the community members and your participants that there's, there's some training that you've had and you want to engage them in helping them solve their problem, right? It's this back and forth. So that problem solving in participatory action research becomes both shared and a responsibility, right? So the first thing to recognize is that when we're talking about this collective approach to problem solving is that collective approach becomes a shared responsibility. Problem solving and it's shared. When we talk about shared, who are you talking about? I'm sort of free in the sense I don't like using the term researcher or participant, so I sort of use the researcher participant and the participant researcher, right? The shared responsibility is between the researcher participant and the participant researcher, right? Both individuals, both groups of people have to recognize that they have a shared responsibility to tackle whatever that problem is. It's not the responsibility of solely the participant researcher to solve the solution, which is going to be guided by some theoretical framework that the researcher participant is going to give them. No, we all immerse ourselves, discuss, a cell, uh, discuss the problems amongst ourselves, and collectively come up with potential solutions. And we implement those solutions and so on. I'll go more into detail in a second. So the first thing to recognize in this collective, quote, collective commitment to engage an issue or a problem is that this collectivity is composed of both the researcher participant and the participant researcher, and that the solutions to this problem have to be a shared responsibility to solve these problems. It's the responsibility of both groups, both the researcher participant and the participant researcher, to go about solving these problems. The second thing that you have to recognize in participatory action research is that insofar as you've decided, decided to engage in participatory action research, the researcher, quote unquote, um, will not fully have an understanding of the complexity of the problem, 
until the researcher has engaged the participants, right? Um, you might know that, oh, I plan on doing some research in South America, and I've heard that they have some problems with this, um, and that's what's motivating me to go to South America and help this particular group in solving that problem. But you're not going to fully have an understanding of that problem until you engage uh, in what uh, Freer calls critical dialogue, right? Critical dialogue with the participants, right? It's only through, so the, the next point is that it's only through, uh, a critical dialogue is a technical term. I'm not going to get into it in this discussion. As I said, this is a, a very general overview, a very, very introductory account of the six different forms of qualitative methods research. Um, you can watch my Freer videos if you want to have more information on collective dialogue and praxis and all that other stuff, but I'm not going to get into that now. So the second thing is that when we're talking about problem solution, and this is, this is extremely important, is that problem solutions are only ever possible after we've engaged in critical dialogue, right? So critical dialogue is essential for problem Critical dialogue is essential for problem uh, uh, problem solutions, problem solvings. There is no way in which a researcher can, can come and arrive at problems problem solution without having first engaged in critical dialogue with the participant researchers, um, because it's the, the community that will contribute their understanding of the complexity of the problem, and in collaboration with the researcher and the theoretical frameworks that the re researcher is going to apply to some of the problems, to the problems. That's where the balance is found. So uh, the very the first point of the tenets, the four tenets, is very important. It's a collectivity, and this collectivity is a shared responsibility, and that shared responsibility is only possible, and this problem solving is only possible after they've both part, both parties have engaged in critical dialogue. Okay, uh, number two. Number two. Um, inclusion of self, there must be an inclusion of self in collective reflections as a mode of research, right? An inclusion of self and collective reflection as a mode of research. And the question becomes, what does collective uh, reflection, what does, uh, yeah, collective reflection, what does that mean? What you'll notice as um, sort of a precondition not sort of, but a precondition for participatory action research. Just as the case with, and the way I look at participatory, this is my own interpretation, the way I look at participatory action research, it's a lot different from phenomenological or narrative research, because in phenomenological and narrative research, what you're really doing at the heart of the research is an analysis of um, a lived experience, right? It, it, basically, it's a lived experience, right? Narrative research, lived experience, heavy, intensive, sort of data-driven by, by um, discourse, phenomenological research, obviously it's lived experience, heavy intensive on, uh, on, on, on narrative accounts of one's life. Participatory action research is a lot different from both narrative and, and phenomenological. I would argue that narrative and phenomenological research share a similarity. Participatory action research is intensively based on sort of accounts, first-hand accounts of some problem. But really and truly, it's not just the account or the analysis of the problem that's at stake in participatory action research. At stake in participatory action research, uh, prima facie is the process in which you go about solving the problem, right? It's a system of solving collectively a problem. So when we talk about collective reflection, in any problem solution, uh, a four-year-old will tell you this. You, you show your, your daughter how to do her times table for the first time or the second time, and she goes about doing her times table and she'll get it wrong. And that's why our, even even my uh, my nice, uh, super cool uh, marker here has a little eraser on it, right? So that you can erase, right? We make mistakes, so you can erase. Uh, collectively, when we try to solve our problems, we're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna think that collectively, as a researcher participant and a participant researcher, that X will be the best solution to the problem. We stated the problem, we understand what the problem is, we have, and I'm not going to go through all of this, but we've identified um, various steps in remedying the problem, and here's what it is. So we implement X, only to find out that X didn't work. So what do we do? Well, we have to erase X and try something else. What this is, collectively, if we're trying to get at X, which is the solution, 
and we find out that X isn't the solution, right? X didn't help get us to the solution, then what we need to do is we need to reflect collectively on what we did wrong. Hey, remember in the last meeting when we met and we said that it would be good to make sure that we have all the, uh, all the donated funds set off in the middle of the, the square, that wasn't really a good plan because we forgot that this thing happened and da, 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 da. So now let's try this other approach for the next time, right? That thing that I just sort of, uh, I guess, exemplified for you or represented for you is the process of uh, collective reflection, right? We're reflecting on um, what didn't go so well. This reflection sort of presupposes, um, for the most part, you can reflect on what went well, but it's not a lot of sort of um, glad handling, right? It really is critical reflection, uh, um, a collective reflection really is a consequence of errors that happened in the process toward problem solving and obviously uh, uh, solutions. Um, and what you do is you reflect back on, back on what wasn't as productive as it could have been and you make remedies to, to, to rectify that in the future.